All right, welcome in. It's Mackie and Judd here. Minnesota Sports with Mackie and Judd. Your daily dose of Minnesota sports entertainment, speculation, and therapy. And uh, Judd, I'm going to try and turn a negative into a positive here for us on this Monday. Uh, this is a statements edition of Mackie and Judd. We will start with gopher hockey related statements, including I may double down on something I tweeted over the weekend that had some uh, gopher hockey fans all upset. But yeah. I figure in order to sort of salvage something, a very disappointing weekend for gopher hockey, I figured um, let's make Declan pay off his St. Cloud State bet where you know the Huskies, the inferior Huskies, lost to the Golden Gophers. Let's see what old Dex tweets looks like in a mustache and some Golden Gopher gear here. Let's get him on screen. There he is. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> oh, wow. Very he nice. looked like a natural, man. Got the stocking cap, got the Gopher t-shirt on here. Seven Corners, Pioneer Hall. Hey. I could see you in all those places. Oh, Pioneer it, Hall. What a great, Dinky great town. Uh, the mayor of Dinky Town. It was uh, Dex tweets who had to tell the bartender at the local Smack Shack at about 7 o'clock on fr- Saturday evening, hey, there's a hockey game on that I need to see, okay? I wasn't wearing all this gear, but I had to get that t- game on the TV, and uh, unfortunately, oh, God. it didn't uh, didn't go as way. Are you to the point where you go. were you like rooting for Quinnipiac? Are you that type no. of uh, an anti no, for guy? No, I'm not because he, two things in man. this. Couple couple rants on this because I saw tweets about this from other fellow yeah. St. Cloud State or Minis- and and in state schools basically, which by the way have done just as good if not better the job than the University of Minnesota. Um, I, I'm still gonna root for the Gophers because I'm gonna I'm gonna have the Gopher. I want to see the Gophers win over Quinnipiac, some East Coast school. That's not. I'm not gonna watch the Gophers' demise over that. Also, this state needed that win. This state needed that win. Are you? Okay, cool. You got your piece of paper from Minnesota State and St. Cloud State that you're a graduate there, and now you're jumping for joy because Quinnipiac beat the Gophers. Like, really? You're gonna be that kind of guy? I'm wow. not gonna be that person. Come what on. a no- what a noble guy. Look at that. Yeah. This guy in my row the boat go go for his rock. So Declan's going to be sporting his uh, he's he's like he's uh, paying up a debt here for the Gophers beating St. Cloud State. He will be doing this entire segment in uh in maroon and gold, but let's start with Judd with statements here on this Monday. Oh, God, this was painful. Um this was the worst Gopher hockey loss of all time. Wow. This was the worst goal for hockey loss. I'll take you back to because right now there's people, there's fans there fighting that at me. Holy but Cross, yeah. Holy Cross was equivalent to the Seattle um, Seahawks loss with Blair Walsh. It was early. It hurt, but it was er- it, it wasn't in the final. Okay, and keep in mind that team nowhere near. This is one of the greatest Gopher collections of all time. Yeah. At least four players who could have turned pro came back to win a national championship. Not make it to that game, okay? 89, Scarda hits the post against Harvard, overtime loss. At the Civic Center, extremely painful. Extremely painful. But I don't think you lost that game because it was self-inflicted, did you? You lost that game because that one, I agree with, uh, that's a Phil and Royce thing. That was hockey. You hit a post, unfortunately. You just ran into a smarter team. You're playing Harvard. You you just ran into, yeah. Uh, your season came to an end, unfortunately. This is the worst loss by a Gopher men's hockey team, I should say, that I have ever seen, and here's why. You got a 2 nothing lead on a team, Quinnipiac, which was really good defensively, had some challenges offensively, and you proceeded to sit back for two periods, essentially, and protect that lead instead of playing your style, which, by the way, your talent, the difference, the difference between Quinnipiac and you was not that Quinnipiac was a bad team. You just had more talent. And instead of using that talent until late in the game and then saying, okay, we're going to shut her down now because we're up by a couple goals, you basically hyperventilated, melted down, peed your pants, whatever you want to say, and you choked. You choked. And I'm gutted for Matsko and that team seemed like a great team. Like, like this is nothing personal, but you choked. This is, this is 98 Atlanta NFC title game territory. Okay, I need to interject here. 
Because I, I, I feel like we should lay out some ground rules. Well, let me give you my statement, and then we can lay out the ground rules, because it plays in. Right. My statement is, I stand by my tweet. I tweeted, I called it a cowardly performance. A cowardly performance. Now, I, I didn't say that a lot of people pushing back. You know, well, one of the one of the players, like, you know, blocked a puck with his face or his neck or something. Like, that's not very cowardly. I'm, I'm not... I'm not calling the players individually cowards. I'm saying the collective performance yeah. of the coaches and the players was very cowardly and that you went into a shell for like an hour and a half. And statistically, I can back it up. The 15 shots on goal, again, this is a Minnesota team with NHL players all over the roster. 15 shots on goal set a record for the fewest shots on goal in the NCAA Division I Men's Ice Hockey Championship game. The previous record was set by Denver and it's lost to North Dakota in 1963. And so, you know, a lot of the pushback too is like, well, but they're playing one of the best defensive teams, a very experienced defensive team in Quinnipiac, and they made some adjustments. That ain't, you know, that's not, I mean, you guys no. watch more college hockey than I do, but like that's, that was part of it. Like, yeah, you're playing one of the best teams in the country, but I don't think we need to do the thing here today where we, we try to massage it and, oh, to make ourselves feel better about yet another Minnesota sports collapse. Let's just try to massage it in a way that makes it look like Quinnipiac was actually the better team here. No, I agree with Judd. It was a choke job. And my, my question for you guys is the parameters we need to draw up here. A lot of people hate when college players are ripped because they're, you know, they're kids. They're just kids out there. They're not... You shouldn't be. You should be teeing off on the coaches. You should, you know, go easy on the players. I'm not going to sit here and like savage individual players by name. I'm going to savage the collective. But to me, like, there's players on that Gophers team that are basically like they're older than Anthony Edwards. You know, there's if like like Brock Faber is 20 years old. He'll be 21 years old. Just signed a three million dollar contract with the Wild. So, so you can't. And I'm not blaming Faber for the loss. I'm just saying like so. So today I can criticize Faber because. He's under contract with the Wild, but yesterday I can't criticize Faber because he's a collegiate athlete. Where do we where do we draw those lines here as we tee off on yet another well, devastating Minnesota sports collapse? Moscow coached a terrible game, so I mean, let's start there. Like if sure. if I can if if I can uh, savage the adult in the, the room in this case, Bob Motzko took like that was everything St. Cloud people complained about, and we're and you know I didn't watch St. Cloud deck. Dex did, but I mean, how do you allow your team to go into that shell? How did I look at the at the game in the third period? There's seven minutes left, and the Gophers are playing like there's 30 seconds left. And I thought to myself, there's too much damn time. Like what happened was a self fulfilling prophecy. Like I could, you could see that they were going to score, and then Matsko had the the audacity to bitch about the uh, Cooley penalty late in the game, which yeah, it wasn't the greatest call but one they scored with the empty net not on the power play and two after you played like that with that team you're going to complain about a penalty call yeah. give me a break so no i mean everybody deserves look they all came back to win a national championship and i told you guys weeks ago if they don't it's a disappointment even i couldn't have imagined the the uh magnitude of the collapse that we saw everyone deserves to be criticized and blaming it on the poor goaltender I saw that, too. He should have stopped those shots. Okay, he made some really great saves, too. And you're telling me a high-powered unit like this, we're going to blame the goaltender because all of a sudden you decided to basically become the 95 New Jersey Devils, and that's a goaltender problem? No, everyone gets a ton of blame here. Is there Okay, is there a world in which you guys can watch that game happen because this is kind of what, like, the go the go for men's hockey Twitter account is funny because, like, super cocky all year long, and I yep. love it. Yep. And, like, taking shots at North Dakota when they won the regional up in Fargo. And then um, and then they lose, and it's kind of a, like, you know, hey, we left we left it all out there. It wasn't the, the season that we wanted. Like, is there any way that you guys would just say, you know what, it was a really fun, good season, and uh, we'll just go get them, go get them next time? Because I think, I think if, if we had, like, if we were like Boston or something and we had a 20 year run where it's 12 titles, 15 titles, or even, I don't know, like three titles at all, any titles, I think I'd be more willing to not be that upset about it. But it, for me, it's an accumulation of everything that's happened with men's team sports 
since 1991. And they are just sort of victims of that history when it comes to my reaction. So I will, I will at least self-report on that front that the history of this state leads into my vitriol. I won't. I'm sick of the excuses. I'm sick of the next year. Like, I'm sick of the, well, but I mean, they made the playoffs. I'm sick of it all. I'm so tired of making excuses. I like part of the uh, part of the I, I think the uh, core fan of Score North likes the fact that we are we're all sick of it. We're all so tired of well they won 13 games the Vikings. Yeah, but they lost in the first round of the playoffs. That's not a successful season. Like you brought everybody back to win a national championship and then you decided not to play your game. I would feel that it might be fair to say get them next year if they had lost a great battle against a team and they had gone down swinging and playing their game. But when you abort your game for two periods and then somebody tries to blow sunshine up my, you know what about, Oh, it's fine. It's college kids. It's been fun. No, you wanted to win a national championship. No player on that team will tell you, yeah, that was a great year right now. They'll tell you it's a massive disappointment. I am through with excuses. No. Declan, are we too negative today? No, no. Uh, here's the thing, too, about gopher hockey, college hockey, and in, in that realm. And, and I, yes, I defended it off the show that this this state needed to see that championship because they were heavy favorites, they were the better team, and they choked. They absolutely choked. Where I do give somewhat of a, I understand some punches that get thrown from the in-state schools is UMD has won multiple championships. Your team that you hate the most, North Dakota, has won a national championship. You haven't won a title in 20 plus years. So when you're cocky and when you're throwing out all those shots and St. Cloud has also been in a title game the last two years, all these other schools that used to beat up on for years in the old WCHA are at your level, if not above you. Now, over the last 20 years, yesterday or Saturday was a chance to then hang a banner, which you love to do and love to talk about your five banners. You had a chance to solidify yourselves as the cocky SOBs and the head of the table and the number one team in the state, and you blew it. And unfortunately for Bob Motzko, that is a somewhat of a theme. At St. Cloud, when they're in regionals, they lost games to Air Force. They didn't know what to do against a trap, Judd. They didn't know what to do against Saratori's Jacques Lemaire-like trap. They had no counterpunch to it. Yes, on Saturday against Quinnipiac, 15 shots on goal, one of the most high-octane-powered offense I have ever seen in college hockey. There's no rebuttal. Instead, it's playing the shell. We had the lead, so we'll, we'll, we'll play the time game. We'll play in a prevent mode. Man, that is a fumble and a half by Bob, unfortunately. And this team needed to go out there and prove that they are the best team in the country to hang another banner. And that's where sometimes the shots get thrown back from Minnesota State, St. Cloud, UMD. And it's rightfully justified because you haven't won a championship in 20 years. Yeah. Yep. Well said. Do you think that uh, you think the riot would have been the same as it was 20 years ago? No. Do you think cars would have no. burned? What, what, no. What, I was just I was kind of curious to see what the reaction would have been if they didn't I, soil themselves. Yeah, I think it would have been boring. Yeah. I, I Well, I... I take that back. I think it would have been celebratory, but not. I don't think that there. I don't think we would have seen a ton of like things burning this time or stuff okay. like that. But I think it, it would have been fun. But uh, yeah, I mean that was you. How do you play scared with that roster? It's so weird, man. They played scared. They played it's, two. It's, you know, it's the '98 Vikings. It's it, it really. I mean, it really is the best comparison is probably the '98 Vikings. It's not that the Falcons were garbage yep. or anything like that. But you are the better team. You have more high-end talent. You can you sort of impose what you want to do. You took a lead. Yep. And they maybe they punch you back a little bit, and then you just completely abort your game. You start taking knees. You stop accelerating. You settle for, you know, it's that's what it felt like. So, Mackie, you, you, you don't watch any college hockey. You, no. It, well, first of all, correct. <laughs> I don't. I was a season ticket holder for a long time, for several years. Um, but I, I do have an opinion on this being lumped onto the pile of Minnesota sports debacles. And so I will, we'll, go, we'll go back to not talking about gopher hockey tomorrow, and you guys can go get your content from wherever you want. Have we seen an explanation, by the way, why the first line and, and the, the Faber defensive pair didn't start OT? 
Uh, I, was he asked? Was Mosco asked about it? I don't know. I've tried to find the post game presser and I can't. I don't I've think there, there's story. not like a cavalry of aggressive beat writers following college hockey teams. Yeah, right? I'm just so. curious why you wouldn't start like why? Because it's sudden death last time I checked and it ended in 10 seconds. I'm just curious why you wouldn't start, you know, the third o- overall pick in the draft um, this past June and Cooley, Nyes, who almost immediately signed with Toronto, Snuggerud, who's great, Faber, who to Phil's point signed o- almost immediately with the wild. I'm just curious why you wouldn't start those guys in overtime. No, oh, it's a good question. It's a good question. Um, maybe they were thinking about golf. Maybe they mm-hmm. were thinking about warm weather. <laughs> they were thinking about the meadows at Mystic, Dex. Yeah. That's my wouldn't only shock, explanation. Wouldn't shock me at all. You know, uh, the golf at the meadows at Mystic Lake is uh, one of the best places to golf. You can stay up to date on tee times with golfthemeadows.com to learn more on those tee times. Uh, not too long ago, towards the end of the last golf season. I went out there uh, to check it out and, and do do a little promotional video. I was even sinking putts. I have not the video evidence on the screen right here in the YouTube channel. Okay, I don't sink these putts. Guess who did? You put a camera on Dex tweets and you go to the meadows at Mystic Lake. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to sink putts. Wow, dude. Okay, you're going to sink many, putts. How many takes? How many I'm takes? I'm serious. That was one. That was one take. That was the first take. It was incredible. <laughs> I said, put a camera on me, and now all of a sudden I can golf. Uh, go to golfthemeadows.com to stay up to date uh, with tee time information. Golfthemeadows.com to learn more. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, all right, boys, let's do, uh, let's do like one more one more lap here. Do you guys have any anything else? I got some twin statements. Okay. Yeah, uh, twin. Um, <laughs> twin statements. Here's here's my here's my uh, which statements statement. My <laughs> twin twins. statements. Twin statements. Twins. 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 Um. It's amazing what competent pitching can do. You know, how much fun are these games like? And and yes, the uh, speed-up rules help a lot. But how much fun is it to watch what appears to be competent pitching now on, on a game-by-game basis? And yes, it's not like you've got one necessarily ace guy. But you know what you got? You got basically five arms who look like they know what they're doing. Um, and don't sleep on my favorite new twin, Christian Vasquez, who I think is doing a marvelous job behind the plate with the pitching staff as well. But I just think it's so it's such a breath of fresh air to me to see them now parade out five arms and every one of them looks pretty damn good. Like there's no, oh boy, it's the fourth starter. It's going to be a yeah. long day. Hey, Dobber, what's going on today? So I think the twins pitching to me is just it looks like they finally found a formula that is working. Yeah, it's so early. Like I, I feel like we should almost get into May before we start making judgments on this team, but it is nice to have competent pitchers and a couple guys that you can trust to go into the seventh inning if you want to. I worry a little bit. So this is today as we record this. Uh, it sounds like Carlos Cray is going to be out for a second straight day with some back tightness. So I just oh so those back tightness I didn't real I thought it was just yeah. a day off on Sunday interesting yeah I don't know maybe I was, well, he did it, was, get booed on Friday did he really get booed he got booed yes there were booze you you could audibly booed hear booze in the he tenth did. inning ninth inning I mean he yep. sh- couple a strikeouts event. grounded in in to a double, double play. play he had runners in scoring position in, in almost every at bat it was a brutal day at the plate for him on okay interesting because I feel like if it, the way that it was kind of framed up through reporting and just through the twins and the press conferences is that like, Hey, forget about how it happened. We got Carlos Correa back. This is great. Am I to believe that maybe the fans are smarter than that? And they know that he tried to go to other places and the twins were his third choice. It was, and they're they're sort of mad about that or what? It wasn't super loud booze. So like it, it wasn't like the stadium all booed him, but after I think he completed his, fifth at bat in the 0 for 5 he definitely heard booze i i think fans just expect more too like i i think that we tried to like cover up for fans and it, you know what if a guy has a day that bad he deserves it he mm-hmm. deserves it can you imagine if that had been his home opener in city field for the mets they would have torched him and the new york post would have gotten him next do you so, think they would have booed him the first game i feel like there's a little bit of i think i was I was in Shea in 98, shortly after Piazza was uh, traded from the Marlins to the Mets, and he was struggling. And this is like two weeks in, universal booze. Yeah. They lit him up. Well, yeah, there's a certain, I think, 
uh, lack of patience that's percolating around here, and I appreciate that. I'll give you one uh, sort of twins-related one. Whenever the time comes, I'm ready for Corey Provis, TV voice and face of the Minnesota Twins. Oh, God. He's done a great job. So Dick Bramer tested positive for COVID. He tweeted the diagnosis. None of us could see it because I think we've all been blocked by Dick Bramer. That is correct. Whenever the Twins are ready to make the transition, Corey Provis will be an excellent TV play-by-play man for Minnesota Twins baseball. How great was him bringing in Perk from the camera well downstairs with let's, pitching questions, and then let's allowing bring Perk up into the booth with those guys. I agree. Like, I, I agree completely. But but Provis is great because he asks questions of everybody who knows what they're talking about. Yeah, he's he's just a great, he, and he you know, and he does he's does doing year round play by play. He's doing basketball games. He's doing football pro. games. He just kind of understands the point guard role of yep. highlighting your teammates there. So, yeah, listen, what, maybe, it, maybe it happens after the year. Maybe it happens in five years. But I think we're in good hands when Corey Provis, when and if he eventually takes that role over. So, yeah. uh, my, my statement is just it's remarkable. Uh, back to the pitching front. So Sonny Gray was excellent on that Friday start, and that was the main takeaway. I know we kind of ripped Correa. That was the main takeaway. Sonny Gray was great. 13 strikeouts uh, for Sonny Gray at tied a career high. Um and I went back on StatMuse, and I did a list of starting pitchers who had 12 or more strikeouts for the Twins in the target field era. Here's the list. Francisco Liriano with 15 in 2012. Wait, can I? Can we guess this? Sure. Can we, uh, so sure. this is individual, p- individual pitchers who have struck out at least 12 at target field for the Twins? In the target field era. So some of these might have been on the road. So just starting okay. pitchers okay. since 2010. Um, yes. The, uh, one guy showed up on this list twice. How many are there? Let's see here. Gray, including Gray, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, so five Lir- guys. Liriano. Yep. Gray. Yep. Uh, Irvin Santana. No. Really? No. Never struck really? out 12 or more. Really? Mm-hmm. I got a wild guess. Mm-hmm. Sam Deduno. No. Uh, okay. Because okay. he threw That's hard enough. One, he That's had a like a low, a low strikeout rate despite having ridiculous okay. movement and stuff. So we're missing four? Yeah, you're so missing got, four. Okay. Phil Pava- Pavano are. never there's no. no way Pavano ever got to twelve. No. Uh Scotty Baker? Yep. Ding. He struck out twelve batters against the Rockies in twenty ten <laughs> at Target Field. I love Scotty Baker. Scotty Baker. Underrated. Underrated. I yeah, I was a big Scott Baker guy. He was a good um, pitcher. Good pitcher. And then the, the other the two others are recent. Um are recent guys. Oh, so Joe Ryan? No. Really? No Joe Ryan? Mm-hmm. Struck out 11, I believe. But that's it. Kenta Maeda. Yep. He had 12 in 2020 in that almost uh, no-hit start. the Brewers. In the pandemic. That's right. I, I mm-hmm. should have gotten that one. I was mm-hmm. at the and game. then uh, one more guy. He did it twice. Twice. Recent. Twice recent. I'm trying to think of... Uh, is he currently on the staff? No. No. He's having a rough twice. go of it. Oh, uh, Jose Barrios. Yeah, he did it twice. He, he okay. struck out 12 and 21 what? in 2019. What's happened to Barrios? They punted early. Or I don't know, man. No, but I mean, he fell Super off. Weird. A, he fell off a cliff. I did not expect him. And and I believe the Blue Jays signed him to a long term extension. So they're sort of they, stuck. They did. Yeah, they did. I liked him. I don't know what the deal is there because his it's certainly not stuff. Really, maybe it is now. I don't know. For a while, he had electric stuff. I yep. haven't watched him pitch this year yet but very weird interesting all right those are your statements if you uh if you'd like to send some hate mail to judd for ripping on poor children college athletes they're just children if you want to uh you can just hit judd up on twitter they'll tell you they choked quinnipiac declan looks great in the gopher gear he does look good he looks good I had a go for hockey jersey when I was like 12 for my birthday. First time I ever gotten a Jumbotron at Mariucci Arena when I was like 10 years old. Nice. First time ever. Uh, yeah. da, da, da. Whose jersey? It was, was just a was plain there... one. It was oh, plain no. One. No, like a Vanek on back? No, no, no not, not a Thomas Vanek. I, I saw a lot of... I saw a Mike Vanelli jersey, Judd. You remember Mike Vanelli from Creighton? 
Sure do. He, I had he college was, classes with Mike Vanelli back in the day. I was in I was in Montemita sure over the weekend with uh, with with the in laws, and there was a guy in a bar and a Vanelli Gophers jersey, and I nearly fell off. It had to be a relative. Who's who's wearing a Mike Vanelli jersey? <laughs> it might be in, somebody that just loved Mike Vanelli. What's uh What's Barry Talixson doing these days? Oh my God! I challenge you to an obscure early two thousands Gopher hockey name off. Grandpa Tony. Kellen Briggs. <laughs> Ryan Pultoni. Or, or, Kellen uh, Briggs. Kellen yeah. Briggs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Steve DeBus. Steve DeBus in goal, right? Hauser uh, in sounds goal. Sounds right to me, yeah. I'm trying to sure. go through all the goaltenders. Sounds right to me. No Robbie Stauber, that's for sure. Um, My favorite thing about Declan's college hockey fandom is that he just found out, even though he's a diehard St. Cloud State Huskies guy, he just found out from us like a week ago that St. Cloud State does have a fight song. So. No, that, that, I'm, I'm telling you, no one knows that fight song. Yeah. Like, I'm sure it exists on Google. Drunk, they're that's too not, drunk to That's not a thing. A lot of school pride St. Cloud State has if no yeah. one knows what the fight song is. No, Maybe we should work on it. It's, it's a Cloud cheersing State. sound at the bar. That's, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, We're headed to the no, red carpet right yeah, now. We'll see you later. <laughs> All right. All right. That's a wrap. Uh, you can find Purple Daily, sort of an off-season reset today, and about 35 minutes of us complaining about the Timberwolves also on Mackie and Judd today. Thanks for hanging out.